that, that was the inspirational piece. Yeah, that piece. For the Star Tower? Yeah. Yeah, that Starfire and the Die Krog. That was the one that I had that they had seen that they really loved and wanted for their place. So that was good. I like commissions that, that are, you know, revisions and revisiting pieces that I've done because I really have a, a good understanding. I rarely get to do things more than once. So it ends up being a thing where I can do it where it's, you know, I can refine it and tweak it and make it interesting. I know what I'm doing now, you know, I know what to expect. Uh, this is actually a, a kind of a signature piece for me, a tower shape, the scale, and the idea of it being kind of a focal point you could fit into a, you know, mostly vertical space, so it doesn't take up volume and, and a lot of width, it takes up height, it makes a nice statement, so it's nice to see it. chill but it's like shoot it's so beautiful here in November been kind of a paradox because being as fragile as it is, it, it's so nuanced. It's, it's like the opposite of you know drawing and carving glass and making something that's got beauty in the end result of the, the difficulty of making an etching or a carving look right and drawing the edge, you know, everything. It's much more spontaneous. The shaping doesn't always work. <laughs> Doesn't always want to do it. That's my medium when it's sharp and it is like a razor. There's certain shapes I'm trying to look for and I'm also trying to knock off parts of things like the score line right there. so cool but some of the fractures they create stress so they they create these little feathery things that are so beautiful and those feathers and, and just how they like from either side you can catch them at different angles and they reflect in them and they exaggerate them they get magnified they catch light and they're just so delicate looking I couldn't have done it 
you know, by hand is, I mean, I couldn't have done it on purpose, you know. It's like this beautiful, symmetrical, uh, you know, just feathery is what I call it. I love how when you look through the other side, the machine polished side gives you kind of a clear window to the back of the chip. It's like the reverse of it. It just has great beauty in life. Like there's one part of the piece that I see down inside and, and then another part of it I want one part of it I want to hide and another part of it I want to magnify so I put a certain piece that creates like a little window to that spot and most of the time after I'm done nobody you know is going to realize it it's me building it that does that you know, I, I just try to I guess pull out the most out of it but it for people looking at it, it's going to be a real subconscious thing. We're just going to know it's dynamic on some level, but you know, it looks like it was, you know, abstractly just kind of jammed together or something, you know. It's actually got a lot of thought to every piece, besides work to every piece. You know, there's a lot of thought that I go through in the composition of a piece. And these, this kind of piece is really just my favorite. There's just so much about it that I just love. It, its scale is something I love. It's, it's colorful, sparkly, dynamic. It's something I love. What's interesting about glass too is that it, 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 can, it can hide a lot, but it can also magnify a lot. Glass has all these really natural qualities. I think that I've been drawn to it my whole life. You know, every, everything going back from collecting bottles as a kid, which I know was a little entrepreneurial too, and to uh, living on the beach and collecting beach glass. And even then, like finding beach glass on the beach was like finding jewels. You know, it was like finding treasure. And I think that, that those experiences, I guess it's true of everybody, you know, it's like these, these experiences we have when we're young and we let build up in us as, as our, as we start reflecting it back, we grow into something, you know? Like those those experiences of finding beach glass and carrying them around in my pocket, you know. I used to I used to do that with pieces of this glass. I'd make something I'd carry around in my pocket for days. You know? And as a kid I would do that sometimes with little pieces of stone or little pieces of glass. And it was always something that was really pleasing and natural. Part of it, you know. And that's a big part of this piece. The symbolism of this piece, you know, it, it's about chaos and structure. Yeah. You know, and that seems like it's so much the way life is. You know, there's there's all this attempt to create structure and 
man-made things. The reality is only God is in control. And I like that that whole symbolic contradiction there that as much as we like to think we're in control, we're not. Reflections and looking at the, I call it the holographic effect, you know, it has this kind of illusion to it. It has the, you know, the ability to trap some particular reflection or color or something in there. And I, I discover it all the time. Like when I'm working on it, there's plenty of times where I don't expect something when I set the piece up there, but I see it happen only at that certain angle or certain position. Bring something out from the piece under it or reflect something, including myself, in it. You know? And I think that's what I love about these pieces that combine the the dichro glass with it, it, it has this mirrored effect. It can just be so beautiful too. I think that was one of the things that I personally loved as, as looking at art was the beauty of it. I remember things from when I was little. We used to go to the Smithsonian as a family. And I remember certain pieces I saw. Or the feeling I had. I remember going into the Hirschhorn and, and just having this overwhelming feeling about the scale of these public pieces. Large three-dimensional and, and contemporary pieces. I really thought I'd be a contemporary sculptor in the way that a bronze artist would be. But or steel guy. I'm not done experimenting with glass. Should be saying it's like cleaning teeth. That's like what I do. That's so terrible. your new that's, career could be a dental. That's hygienist. a terrible thought. I don't want to go there. <laughs> I don't. Want It's hard to think of how many years that I've been doing what I do. And it's been a great road. I kind of can't believe some of the things that I've been able to do, but look back at, at kind of like about 35 years of really committing to it, kind of everyday type of committing to it. And it boggles my mind that it's taken this long to get it where I want it. It was a 
the one from Spring Street? So we're below the center of line of gravity, so all you're going to do is straighten your back up. All right, that should just lift it a few inches off the floor. Ready? Set. Go. Now we're going to swing. Let me go this way. You alright? Now we're just going to lay over. We're going to pick it up. Back a little bit that way. We're just going to go horizontal. Go horizontal. Yeah, you got it? You're right. You're good. You're good. You need a good. measure? Yeah. My first banner. <laughs> That's cool. This original piece was Darla's. It was fire and ice. This is the one that inspired the, the new Starfire Tower. Had a banner blown up. Fire and Ice is the one that's now at the corner table of the bar. It'll work. Yeah. Are you okay with it having that crease? I can't. I've had a lot of struggle getting it to be just tight. I noticed the crease. Yeah. Yeah. I, I noticed it. it Why don't up. you let it just sit there for today and maybe it'll fall into place. I do the shaping of the pieces and then I attach a lens to the shape of the piece. So I'll, I'll make a pattern of this size, for example. Mm -hmm. And then once I attach the lens to it, I, don't, I, I use, I think, every one that I make, except for this one, which has a scratch on it. <laughs> See how the scratch is mirror image? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. So the yeah. metallic finish that Dicro glass is made of it, it makes a mirror that's see-through. So, so is it just on image, one side or is it on both sides of the lens? It's on one side. You're saying it's a mirrored image. But it's also oh, it's on the bottom, isn't it? It's no, on, it's on the top. You can feel it's it. It's on the top. <laughs> no, I mean, is the, is the lens on the top? The, the lens, lens is on the bottom. The lens is on the, the bottom. The is on the top. Yeah. So it, what happens is that the lens is see-through. Yeah. So it multi-images anything. So any shape of the chip, the feathering that happens in the chips, the, yeah. anything that's on the surface. That's what's partly... In, in the hard part in processing, it's like I have to be careful not to put things in there I don't want to use. Yes. Like I didn't use this, for example. Mm. And, and then also, it, it magnifies everything visually. So yeah. I try to either take advantage of that or, or kind of tone it down there. Let's hold it up like this at the light there. Oh, oh yeah. So it totally changes yes. its reflection. That's a different color, I think. It's an old one. Yeah. I, that is an old one. I think I used every piece I made. Yeah. All, you know, built it into it. But I was using a blue gold lens. But it's incredible when you see the green and so the purple. Yeah, blue. Purple. That's the lens that I use for yours. It's gold and blue. And blue and a bit. A bit but what happens as well. is that the light is mixing colors, like we're yeah. mixing hats. So it's mixing the light together which is creating yes. other colors. And then when those colors are bouncing off of each other inside, yes. so it might mix two colors that bounce mm, off see. of something, and it might pull in color being glass. That's refracting. So you, yeah, you're getting reflections, you're getting, in fact, I don't know where that color's coming from that's real pink. I think it's from that light up there. Oh, right. <laughs> so from 18 feet away, yeah, it's yes. picking up a little strain of that pink light, 
yeah. and it's bouncing around in there. It gets kind of yes. trapped. It starts yeah. bouncing in its fractures, which makes it multicolored, mm -hmm. which is why I love this particular lens I use more than anything. Mm -hmm. That piece, when I'm composing the whole piece, I take certain large, I made a certain amount of large ones and a certain amount of medium ones, and I tried to kind of balance where they were on the piece. Yeah. All those, though, I always put a piece in front of it, and what it does is it, it mimics the image in reverse of the piece in front of it. So it kind of creates a hologram. Yes. And so you'll see the reflections of it in reverse, even like a line, like this line that comes from the inside of this chip right here. It makes it really deep as well, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes it really deep. But there is the coolest reflections view. Yeah. That curve with that stuff behind it is causing the reflection to go across this glass. It has a life about it. Yeah. And then by light, you know, like I have this light pointed at it. This is an MR16 with white on it, just white light. So it's bouncing off of the mirrors, giving it that sparkle. It's a lot of fun. This is, this is my favorite kind of piece. It's not that heavy, is it? Not as well, I'm levering it, but it's yeah. not as bad as I, yeah, I would have thought. As a deadlift, two people would probably strain a little bit, but that's, this is about max for two people. Yeah. And we can put it on a dolly and roll it and do things like that. Yeah. Levering. I do it all the time. We had it laying down to take that one shot I was showing you. Oh, right. I okay. took that through the bottom. So it has that whole linear effect. <laughs> I was just saying to Paul, we didn't know what we were letting ourselves in for when we... Uh... When, I first, when I first came to the studio that time, I just had no idea. It really is lovely. Well, now you're part of my life. You think I'm a part of yours, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens. I'm part of the family now. Yeah. Know? No, it truly is beautiful. It is. It's, it's been really cool for me. Now, Bill, have you finished? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other than a little cleaning, a little, bit, yeah. a little buffing. We, we love it just the way it is, don't we? Cool. We do. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's nice. just fantastic. So we're going to build a picture of the two places it's going to sit. So it'll start in a very formal environment. Right. And then it'll end up in, in front of a, a garden. Yeah. yeah. Gorgeous and are you too. moving back permanently? We will do eventually. Okay. When, when, when I'm Yes. Yeah. He always saying goodbye to it in a way. It's a narrow. <laughs> well, it is. It's a part of me. Well, especially a piece that's special like this because he was his hands were on it for so long yeah. that it's really a part of him. Yeah. Uh, I love the pieces. You can bring it back anytime you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably get it again to take care of shipping or something for yes. you to get to that yeah. point. But uh, if you don't have somebody to do it for you, but we'll get to visit it again. Bill, is there a little bit of grief when it goes away? Sure there is. I'm going to miss it. I get to keep it for a couple, month and a half or whatever, but um, yeah, every one of them is part of me. It's, it, it's, uh, but it feels really good also at the same time. You know, I, I say what I get is the pictures. And that's, you know, in, in a way it's taken. I, I, gotten used to that a long time ago so it's part of the process of it but then I get to share it and it typically comes back on in different ways and, and even this it's not uncommon for me to finish a piece and not even get it professionally photographed just because I'm like deadline to deadline or something so I have to get over it really quick yeah I'll, I'll have it professionally shot